Hey guys, Joe here. Thanks for checking out another video on the channel. Really appreciate it. Maybe consider getting subscribed. You'll help the channel grow organically or become a member and help me out directly. Everything you do goes back into the channel, so it's all good. If you've been a member or a subscriber to the channel for a while, you'll know that I've been doing these tabletop reviews for roughly two and a half to five years. First one was in 2017, so I just did the math. Holy crap five years. That probably explains why there's over a thousand videos on this channel. Anyway, in 2019, I took a look at something that came out in 2019, and I didn't do it justice, especially now looking back at it and doing some more research. So today we're doing a revisit on this item, and I want to get it right. Plus, I actually picked one up for the channel, and that's going to help us out in the long run. I got this one from Liberty Arms. Check them out, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Full disclosure, I work there like one, two days a month just to help out, and they give me fair prices on firearms. I usually buy a used one. I try to leave all the new ones for you guys. However, every now and then something comes in that I really, really have to have. So that was the case here because I wanted to redeem myself with the Taurus TX-22. Now they've changed the packaging a little bit from before. Uh, Taurus has changed from white and orange to black and white, which I approve of. It's a nice looking little box. Inside the box, you do get the firearm. This one is in OD Green, which was a distributor special. Comes with not one, but two 16 round magazines and a speed loader, which for a 22 could actually come in handy because rim fire is a little bit more fiddly to put into the magazine and they don't stack as well as regular center fire cartridges. So you get two magazines, speed loader, and an adapter that we will talk about later, but we don't need the box for that. You also get a gun lock in your manuals, but I hide those out of the way because the firearm is the important part of what's in the box. This is a polymer frame aluminum slide, 22 long rifle with a, I believe that's a four inch barrel on there. It's about the size of a Glock 19. It's actually about the same size as the Glock 44, which came out about the same time. Glock released their 22 long rifle, and it is similar-ish. However, they release it as a training tool for the Glock 19. There is no direct, like, descendant for this firearm from the Taurus lineup. It looks like a G3, and it shares some of the design cues from the G family, but it is its own pistol. The controls and the trigger are completely different. This one is finished in a two-tone, which I really like. I like the OD green that Taurus uses. It's muted. It's not like super bright, so way to go. Let's do a tour around the outside. It is a mid-size, almost full-size gun. As you can see, it fits completely in my hand, which is nice. Has a generous undercut. You can definitely get up on it, and this is a 22, so it's not like you need to choke up on it, but it helps you practice proper gun handling. No real beaver tail, but that is pretty high cut up on the gun. External manual safety, both sides, and it is one that allows manipulation of the slide. So if you have a loaded mag, you can charge the firearm while it's on safe. Uh, this one is empty, obviously, because we're manipulating a firearm. The ejection port is smaller. Most 22 pistols tend to have a small ejection port. You don't need that giant one because you don't have 45 caliber shells coming out of it. Squared off trigger guard, no texturing up there, but you could always put your finger up there if you need to hold to handle the massive pull from 22 long rifle. Up front, you have a Picatinny rail with two slots up front and your serial number under there. Otherwise, there'd be another rail. Glock and a couple other companies actually still have extra inserts. This is just a weird design. But it, I guess it's functional, just you have to be a little bit more picky on your lights, lasers, and bazookas. Front and rear slide serrations, and as you saw, very easy to manipulate. Uh, hard to enunciate, but manipulate is easy. You can do it either side because it's an aluminum slide. The Glock uses a mostly polymer slide with aluminum rails. This is all aluminum. This one has a three dot sight arrangement out of the box. Wait a minute, Joe, that doesn't look like a three dot arrangement. Nope, because I took acrylic paint, which dries flat, my black pens that I use, and I blacked out the rear sights because I like a high-vis front and a blacked out rear. My Kimber has it, a lot of my guns have them, and it's my preferred style if I'm not running actual night sights or fiber optics. A little bit of a spoiler, I have a set of fiber optics coming for this because they were cheap. They were 27 bucks and we'll see if they work. Way to go, Amazon. Use my links. 
this gun should shoot well and I am kind of deviating from other reviewers in that I'm going to be modifying this gun before I take it to the range because I want the best possible chance to enjoy my time there. I'm not a failure reviewer, which means I don't intend to put 50,000 rounds through it without cleaning it because I like my guns to run as good as they can, as long as they can, and I'm going to give them the best damn chance. So if you want to see a gun fail, there's plenty of tubers that actually will run a gun completely uncleaned to see how long it'll last. That ain't me. I want to show you what happens if you take care of them. So yeah, stay tuned for all of those. I've already re-oiled it and it sounds pretty good. You can hear that the metal on plastic makes a different sound from even normal striker fired, or excuse me, polymer guns. I was looking at the trigger. Speaking of which, it is striker fired. Taurus themselves have said you can dry fire this until the cows come home, so it is safe to dry fire it, even though it is a rim fire cartridge. I said in my original video, never, or try to avoid as possible, dry firing a 22 long rifle, but Taurus themselves says that you can, so that's good that you can sit there and dry fire it. Decent trigger, has some take up there. A lot of striker fire guns do, but the break is super short, or excuse me, super clean. So you come back, you take up the trash, and hold on. So this is a Glock 48, clear. And this trigger is a Glock standard trigger, even though technically this is kind of a Gen 5 gun. It doesn't have ambi control, so I don't really, it's like a Gen 4.5. But the trigger, listen to this trigger. Number one. Why is there all that take up? What the hell's going on inside the frame? That's what happens when you have a pre-cocked or a half-cocked striker on it. Still single action, but if some people would call it a modified double action. Don't listen to those people, they're insane. This gun is upgraded with the shield mag, and you'll be seeing a video on this as well. But let's get back to the one we were talking about with the better trigger. As I said, single action, very nice pull. Only a few pounds. And the reset is pretty much where the brake is. Right there, you can hear it, you can almost feel it, and if you're just holding to the reset, you can usually stop it right on it, and then the next brake is nice and crisp. Let me know in the comments if I already said it, but the mag release is reversible, but the only ambi controls are the safeties. And you do need the gun charged in order to engage it, which, wait, do you? Now you know. So if you rack it and it's empty and engage it, then you can load your mags and charge the firearm while it's still on safe. A little backwards, but that's fine. I like the grip panels. They're G3 texture. G2s were a little bit more aggressive, yet they're in the right position. I do wish they would do something up here. I actually have my other one of my guns, which you should have seen last week, out getting stippled in the same place. The finger grooves here definitely work for holding and they work well, and the external safety allows me to put my thumb somewhere like my 1911s without resting on the slide lock slide release, which let's face it, I'm gonna do anyway, so we'll see how many times I keep it from locking back. What do you say we take her apart? Go ahead and safety check it one more time, nothing in it, yay. You're going to have to drop these two tabs, well technically it's one tab, pull the trigger and then you can redo it because you didn't pull it enough. This is more a problem with Joe's hands. And then you just pop the top off. It doesn't have to go forward. It comes forward just enough to lift off. You'll see one difference between this and a lot of 22 guns, like Chiapa 1911 or Beretta clones, which all suck. But this one does not have a fixed barrel. It is contained within the slide, much like a standard gun. Captive guide rod. It is plastic, but it is rebuildable. So if you have a spring failure, but this still works, you can always just change that out. Your barrel is very light and small, S-M-O-L, small, uh, but it is constructed very well. Again, the takedown is a little bit further, or excuse me, the lockup is a little bit further forward than it is on, say, a Glock or another gun. And since it doesn't have a breech lockup area, they've kind of rounded off the front of the chamber area. Very, very big chamber or a strong chamber. I don't know what round in a 22 you could put in there that would actually blow that out. So that's nice to see. It is a screwed in 
front sight post, just like a Glock and a single screw in the back. That's why it's so easy to change these out. You can even run Glock front sights on these. Still has the steel insert for the breech and the breech block, and it is striker fired, as I said. That is a fake striker indicator. I'm not sure if European markets require it. I think I said it, but this is like the eighth time I've recorded this, so you'll have to bear with me. Once that's taken apart, we can take a look at the frame. The frame is much heavier than the slide. That's usually a reverse with the polymer gun, but this is where all the magic happens. So you have this block here, which holds everything. The takedowns on a Glock and even Tauruses are in here. This is just a solid piece of metal, which helps brace the barrel from that massive 22. Overall construction is, you know, bog standard polymer gun. We are going to take a look at something and that is this adapter. Now this adapter is for putting a suppressor on the firearm. However, it does not go on with the barrel out because how would do? How would do? It would not do. So what you have to do is reassemble the firearm. So take your barrel, put it in there. Very standard reassembly style. Take your guide rod, small end forward. Get her started. Helps if your fingers work. Mine don't always. There we go. So she's flat there. You can go ahead and take your slide, line it up, push down, pull back, and you are back in business. If you're happy there, go ahead and leave it there. Otherwise, lock your slide back because, as you can see, I called this a two-piece barrel for some reason last time and didn't expound on it. Uh, yeah, it's so that you can actually put the adapter on it. I think the reason I said it was because the adapter didn't actually come with it. But what you need to do, if you have a 3 8 open-ended socket or a wrench, you can actually do this. But I'm just going to use some pliers because it's not on there that tight. Go ahead and break it loose. And unthread, de-thread, de-attach this little cover. So that you can keep going. Keep going, a lot of threads. And take this adapter and put it on the front. The reason they've done it this way is so that you don't have to buy another barrel and also they can keep the hole small, which does aid in some stability too. You'll also see that when this gun is together, the barrel doesn't tilt back. It's not a tilting locking action, it just locks forward. But once you've attached this, and I have tape on the end of my pliers just to avoid damaging it, don't grab threads, just grab your barrel. But yeah, once it's tightened, then you have half by 28 actual threads so you can run a suppressor, which BT Dubs 2022, we are getting suppressors for the channel. Uh, our store has started the process to get class three uh, approval for firearm suppressors. None of those words came out right. But the reason why I wasn't running this in there from the get-go is because this doesn't have a thread protector. I've ordered a thread protector, and once I get the thread protector, I'll put it on there and probably just run the thread protector. And you know what? I'm going to leave it on there because I don't plan on taking this out shooting until after it arrives. But that's kind of cool because then you can optionally have it completely flush or you can run the suppressor. It doesn't do anything for ballistics, I don't think, because it's an outside barrel extension much like your suppressor would be. So it's not actually rifled or aiding in velocity, but it does look cool. And once we put a can on it, probably a short one, it will look really good. But there you go, she's back together. I'm gonna put this back in the box so I don't lose it. And hopefully this thing shoots as well as it's been touted to. So we'll be taking it out to the range. I'm gonna do about 100 rounds through it. And then I'm probably in the same day gonna run probably another 500 just to see what it does. I will break it down and clean it in between some of those uh, sets of rounds because again, I'm not torture testing, I'm function over time testing and I think it should do well. So if you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave them down below. Say, hey, I watched your other video. This one was much better. I'd really appreciate that. And then just use my links and all that stuff. You can order one through Liberty Arms and they will hook you up. When the SIG 322 comes out, I will be picking one up and we will do a direct comparison. It's a brand new pistol and I haven't been able to get my hands on one yet, but I am in the queue. So come back for that. That Glock 48 I showed, I'll be doing a video on that as well. So look forward to that. And come back for the next one so I can do this the right way. I'll talk to you later. Bye!